Apple has a calendar app and it creates alerts. Today's agenda is going to be going over events. In order to explain alerts, I've got to go back a little bit and explain just what an event is because alerts occur for events in the calendar. An alert is something that pops up on your screen or it makes a sound or it does the flash, whatever it does. These are That's what an alert is. It's something that gets your attention to let you know you've got something that you need to pay attention to. And managing alerts really helps you because it helps you remember things. I use it to help remind me of something. Oh, I got a haircut. Oh, it's a, it's got. I got to be there in half an hour. And so there's different kinds of alerts. There's different standard settings that are out there. There are what are called default settings that are set up in your phone or in your Mac or in your iPad. And they are standardized settings for whenever you create a calendar event, you will automatically have those default alerts set. But the best thing to do is to know how to customize them. And you can customize them and change how they appear, when they appear, and how many you get, and what if they make a sound or not. And so we're going to take a look at all of that. So by the time we're done today, You'll understand alerts a lot better. You'll understand the options are available and you'll never hopefully be late for anything ever again, right? Okay, so a calendar event is a has a description. What are you going to do? Are you going to attend a class with Bob? Are you going to go to a doctor appointment? Are you going to go to a dinner with someone? And it has a duration, a starting time and an ending time. And the default, by the way, is one hour, but you can change that. So an event has a description of what it is. You enter that and a start and an end time, and you can enter that and change it if you want to. And it also has something that is kind of unique called a location. You can put a location in an event. And the reason I mention locations is because if you have a location set up for an event, that will trigger an alert automatically based on how when you have to leave to get to your event at that location so if you've got to go to a concert like candlelight you know a concert that we were talking about earlier and you have a location for where it's taking place at a venue and you put that in your calendar event your apple calendar will issue a reminder saying hey it's time to leave and remind you in addition to just say an advanced time before the event. Now the calendar app includes a couple of things. It includes events, which we learned have description, start and end and location, but that's not necessary. A description and a start and end are necessary. And it also has reminders built into them, but to make life a little easier today, we're not gonna talk about alerts for reminders. We're just gonna talk about alerts for events. Alerts are these things that get your attention. It's how and when you get notified. So the how might be a little banner or a pop-up that shows up on your screen on your device, and it can show up on your phone, it can show up on an iPad, and it can also show up on a Mac. They all have the ability to pop up alerts on the screen. It might make a sound if you want sounds. If you have your phone or iPad or Mac muted, it won't make a sound, but it will if you unmute them and have them set up. And you ha- might have a, something called a badge that tells you you've got something up. That's a little red dot that's next to an app icon that you see all the time uh, when you look at them. And there's also this thing with Apple called a haptic. It's the vibration that a device makes. For example, if you have your device muted, you still would get a vibration reminding you when you need to be notified. You can customize all of these and they are all possible to use simultaneously as well. So let's take a look at these alerts and we will see what we can do. Now you're seeing my iPhone home screen, which is, I have a lot of apps and I have a lot of things, but there's our calendar app right here. It says Thursday, today is the 28th. So if I open up the calendar event, you can see that I've got this tech topic set up here, setting alerts in Apple Calendar. I've also got 
an event that is set up for 345 my time and it automatically assumes an event is about an hour long that's one of the defaults and i've got a uh, an expat group that i'm meeting with here in barranquilla at the red door pub that gets together and learns talks english so these are my events that i have one of the things that i can do is i can look at this event and i can open it up if i open up this event it shows me event details explain alerts is the name i gave it it's location i put here and i have it in my calendar and the alert is set for 30 minutes before that's the standard default. Now I'm going to show you in settings where you find the default settings. And there is an option for a second alert if I choose to. And I'm going to show you how to set these. If I wanted to change my alert to me not 30 minutes before, but I'm going to leave it there because in about three minutes, we might get a message or something on my phone. You just tap that setting and you can change when you want your alert to be visible to you. And that means you're either going to get a screen alert or you're going to get a sound or you're going to get a vibration. Those are the, some of the different types of notifications that alerts do. And you can set it to be an hour before, two hours before, etc. So whenever you set up a calendar event, you'll have a default setting and it shows you what the default is right here but you have the ability to modify that. You also have the ability to create a second alert as well. And so when you set up a second alert, you can have a second reminder. So say you wanted to know, gee, I wanna make sure I remember I've got my doctor appointment tomorrow, but then I wanna be no, have an alert an hour before my appointment so I know it's time to get ready to go. Because sometimes we schedule things way in advance, You know, if it's something three months, four months out, you know, it helps to have something that's a week before or a day before. Maybe you've got to get ready for something. Maybe you have to prepare some materials as well. So you can leave that at none or you can set that at an hour before if you want to and it'll have a second alert that'll be set for you, okay? So these are options that you can have when you're setting up your alert, whenever you do it. Now, alerts are very easy to, to modify as we saw and you can edit the calendar event by editing the event entirely. Now, these are just says alert. It doesn't say how it's gonna show up. Because I'm at the location here, it doesn't tell me when it's time to leave because this is actually my physical location where I'm here right now. But if I want to change some of my ways I'm alerted or change my defaults, I have to go out of the calendar. The calendar basically is just letting you set when you are alerted before an event takes place. And that's all you can really do in the calendar itself. So I'm gonna exit my calendar and I'm gonna go over to settings and find an app here called Calendar. The Calendar app gives you the ability to do a lot of things. So the Calendar app is showing me that I've got some information here called default alert times and default alert times whenever i set up a calendar event it's going to automatically set an alert for 30 minutes before and when that happens i i can change now if i if i prefer to be notified an hour before whenever i create a calendar event i can change this and i can say you know i'd rather have this always be an hour before I have to do something. I prefer that extra time to be ready. But 30 minutes is the standard that typically comes with iPhones and iPads and Macs, and you can set it. And you can set it differently for your phone. You can set it differently for your iPad. You can set it differently for your Mac. They're all independent in terms of the settings for the events that you can manage and the alerts. So I can have a time to leave turn on so that when it's available, if I have an event there, it'll actually use Apple Maps to tell you about traffic and when things are happening and how long it's gonna take you to walk there or drive there or, or take a taxi or an Uber there so you can arrive at your destination on time. One of the things you see here is birthdays. If I have 
alerts set up for birthdays. If I have a contact and I have their birthday and their contact information, I will get an alert for their birthday. I use the reminders app myself. But I also have something for all day events. If I have something that's going to take place all day and it's not a specific time, I can just look at it all day. Now, for the most part, calendars work pretty similarly across Android and iPhone and across Windows and other things. So it's not difficult to, to manage alerts. So let's take a look at one other thing here in the settings. In the settings, there is a function called notifications, and notifications determines how your app is going to do something. In the calendar, you control when, but in the notifications settings for the app, you turn on how it's going to do it. And this is where you have a lot of options to customize it. So first of all, I have calendar says allow notifications. I want the alerts. Calendar events are important to me. So I want them to show up on my lock screen, meaning when my phone is off, I will get a little message that will show up on my screen, even though I don't have it on at all. And I'll see it in notification center and I'll see it as a banner. So I want a lot of ways to be notified. The banner style is temporary. Temporary means that it will go away. The banner will disappear after a while, except the one that's on your lock screen, obviously, because you have to unlock your phone to get to it, but you won't, it'll go away. The sound I have is to make a chord, but you can change the sound here and you can actually download to new to tones from the from the tone store apple's store here called tone store gives you the ability to actually go and download sounds for ringtones alert tones they work for anything phone calls text messages any type of alert you want so you can change these and see what they might be so it's like a like the, when a text message comes in a calendar alert sound is going to be short. Haptics are the vibrations. They're set to default. So you can have a default haptic that's synchronized with the other alerts. and Or you can have custom vibrations if you want to or change some of these others. That determines the kind of vibration your device makes when it is in vibrate mode and making a haptic instead of a audio sound. So there's a lot of options there. A couple of other things. This banner style, as I mentioned, temporary. We looked at sounds. Badges. I will see a little badge icon next to my calendar app if I have an alert that came up. In fact, I should have an alert here on my screen. You can see my alert here came up on my screen, and I haven't cleared any of my other alerts here, but you can see it pops up on my, it's a banner, and it will be there until I eliminate it. And when I slide to from left to right, I can clear it and other things. So you'll get a lot of these options for you. Let me go back to settings here. And we'll take a look at some other things. So that's a badge, that's banners. If you have your phone connected up to your in-car electronic system via CarPlay, you will see an alert for a calendar event pop up on your CarPlay screen. You can turn it off if you want to. These are just buttons that you turn off or on just by tapping on them. You can also choose to show the alert on your Mac. And you have the ability to look at all of these things if you want to and synchronize Mac or not Mac. So sometimes people just don't want them on their Mac because they don't want to be interrupted. And if you put yourself in Do Not Disturb, certain alerts will still get through. Apple considers calendar alerts a priority alert, so they will typically show through. You basically can customize your notifications here so that you get notified about upcoming events, if somebody's invited you to an event or invited responses. Now, one thing that's happened to me that I've noticed is that when I have my American Airlines flight information in my Apple wallet, if the American Airlines changes the departure time, 
I will get an invitation to update my event automatically. Typically, they're used in business and in organizations where everybody's on the same calendar. And if you want to get a group of people together, you invite them. But Google Calendar and Apple Calendar and Microsoft Calendar all support invitations. There's also shared calendar changes, more used in business environments. But you also have the ability to have Siri kind of pick up things. One of the things that Apple does with Siri is if you have to get an email about a calendar event, it will pull things up or Siri found information in an app. Uh, like an airline app or something like that, you can have it. But that's not typically used. The main things you're going to be looking at, these are all the standard settings, lock screen, notification center, banner, banner styles, temporary, the cord set to this, badges, CarPlay, and show on Mac are all standard settings for you. And if you have them set up this way in your iPad, uh, they'll, they'll show up exactly the same way on your Mac as well. So those are some things with notifications that give you the ability. If you ever want to change your sounds and haptics when you're in silent mode, it will not play ringtones, alerts, or system tones, but it will play alarms and timers and music and audio from videos. So you can put yourself in silent mode and it's not going to play. It's going to use that haptic vibration for you and give you the ability to do it. Now, one thing that's common, un unfortunately, is that with sounds and haptics, some people have this change with buttons turned on. This is actually going to determine how loud your uh, sound will be for any type of alert or notification if you use your volume buttons to adjust the volume. I do not change my alert sound with my volume buttons. And that's how this is set up. I don't know if that's the default or not anymore, but sometimes you think, well, I want to put my phone on mute and then you take it off mute or you adjust your volume for a phone call or to play some music. If it was set to change with buttons, that would change the sound of my alerts as well. So I don't want to do that. Haptics will play in silent mode. That's the standard setting. You can say always play. So if you want to get a haptic vibration and a sound and a notification on your screen, because you know we, we all need help remembering things, you can set it to always play. And that will always remind you. And these are just some of the different tones that are available for uh, no sounds and haptics, but calendar can be set up in the calendar settings. I hope I've helped make calendars and alerts a little bit more understandable for you and helped you understand how to change your alert times and how to change the kinds of alerts you get and also how to customize uh, anything you might want to customize for it. So take advantage of that. No matter what kind of device you have, it looks very similar. On, on different calendars, it's pretty common to be have the ability to change these alerts for anything.